Well, there's no Debbie on the couch today as she is off with the kids for school holidays, but she has left us in very capable hands. Have you ever dreamt of running away to see the world? Yes, you know you have. It is the perfect topic for travel today because author Sam Pease did exactly that. She took her son with her for an amazing two-year-long adventure. Welcome to you both, Jet and Sam. Hi, Mel. Really nice to have you in the studio. <laughs> Nice to see you, Jet. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> now, what inspired, Sam, the trip? What inspired the idea for you to take Jet out of school and run away for two Well, not run away, but go travel no, for two no, years? No, I did run away. <laughs> well, oh, OK, run away for two years. I'm not going to lie, I ran away. Um, it was There was a couple of things, actually. We'd had a double bereavement in the family, and um, I kind of felt like I really needed to prove there was a bit of life after death. And also, he was at the age where... He was perfect for travelling. He was 10 years old. He would remember everything as he got older and he still wanted to hang out with me. <laughs> so, yeah, that's important. <laughs> yeah, so I thought if I don't do it now, I never will. So, yeah, we sold the house and ran away. And you took off. So, Jet, where did you go? Well, we went to so many places. Um, Palau, Guam, uh, right through America. Uh, some of my favourite places... Uh, were uh, riding camels in the Sahara Desert. It was, wow. Yeah. So many good memories. So what would be, so obviously riding camels, you loved it. Mm -hmm. What would be one of your other favourite parts of the whole trip? Maybe, the Museum of Math. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Maybe, uh, yeah, that or swimming with 21 million harmless jellyfish in Palau. That was incredible. Or really? Oh, there's a photo of it. There's some awesome cool photos on screen now. Jellyfish. So hang on, harmless jellyfish. Yeah, there's 21 million. Well, they, they give you a little, a little tingle if they land on your lip. It's kind of like a little kiss. <laughs> a little kiss. A little jellyfish kiss. A little kiss. jellyfish kiss, That sounds yeah. quite terrifying. What did you think before you got in with them? Um, be Woohoo! Before I got in, I was quite scared because I was like, what if they do sting? The jellyfish. <laughs> yeah, and then I kicked a few of them. And so you're fine. What well, yeah. incredible Excellent. experiences. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. you know, I wrote a book about it, so I know I actually did all of these things, but I'm still, I am still flick through the book going, I can't believe I actually did that. It's a very surreal, uh, surreal sort of experience to, you know, I've been dreaming about travelling the world with my mm. son for 10 years, and then to have actually done it and then wrote a book about it, it's just... And it just feels surreal, you know, sitting here talking about it. Everything's surreal. And now you're back. You describe it as an adventure. So what are some of the things yeah. that you think Jet learned along the way? I mean, I think as a parent, you know, you tend to have that sort of thirst for knowledge and that innately sort of curious, um, you know, it's in, it's in how you parent. And so we, I mean, we went to over 100 museums, you know. We spent, um, we inadvertently did a World War II trip. So one minute we're in Hiroshima touching roof tiles burnt by the bomb mm. and three weeks later we're standing in Pearl Harbor imagining the war from a completely different perspective. So, I mean, the educational element to this trip was so strong just because of who we are as people. Mm. You know, we're not mm. the sort of people that would just go and lie on a beach for six months and, you know. And obviously you went to school in France for a while, Jet. And then you mm. also, what I like about the book is that you write your own little diaries in it and one of the most fabulous bits in is that you write your review of all the toilets that you go the to. toilet diary. What was oh. the most fabulous toilet that you visited in the trip? Uh, definitely the one in, uh, the ones in Japan, uh, maybe the one at the Robot Museum. The, the, the astronaut toilet. Oh yeah. yeah. So what was that like? The astronaut toilet, it was odd, it was different. <laughs> Well, yeah, because there's no fresh water in the mm. space station, obviously, so everything sort of has to be sucked out by a tube and... And renewed. <laughs> oh, my goodness! <laughs> this just sounds extraordinary. So, Sam, from your point of view, what do you think... What are tips that you'd like to pass on to people that are thinking about travelling with the kids? What's the best thing that they need to know? I think that it doesn't have to cost as much as you think it will, because even though, I mean, you know, obviously the flights and accommodation are going to cost a little bit more, but you can do activities that cost nothing. I mean, two of our favourite things is called Magical Portals and Park Bingo, where you just go and get a sandwich, sit in a park, and try and cross off silly things you see, like bald man wearing an inoffensive T-shirt, or bald man in a Ferrari, or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Park Bingo, and the Magical Portal game where you go, OK, let's get lost and you just wander around and the goal is to find a really amazing ice cream shop or something like that and just wander. You can just do know? some wandering and find things yeah. for free. and mm. always eat outside the uh, four block, it's called the four block zone, so if you're near a major tourist attraction, don't eat or drink mm. anything within four blocks of it because it'll cost more. Wonderful advice and such a wonderful trip and you can read all about it too. You'll find Sam's book
talk the Jet Project at Good Bookstores. Thank you so much, guys, for coming in today. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, to talk travel with us.